Act all the tension like ladies and gents When I mention my name at the door And I hope you'll pardon me See by my card I am finding a world we may explore You're in the dream I have drawn You're like the wings for my song I get a lift with your gift To know right from the wrong Really strong Our imagination will find this occasion To go where we know we belong It was Harold's bedtime. But Harold didn't want to sleep. He wanted to read his new book about dinosaurs. Harold loved dinosaurs. In fact, near his bed, in its own special place, Harold kept something wonderful. It was a fossil, a small footprint from a dinosaur that had lived a long, long, long time ago. Harold wondered all about dinosaurs, what were they really like? Why weren't they here anymore? And wouldn't it be fun to ride the back of a big, long-necked dinosaur like the boy in his book? Harold wished there were a way to bring the dinosaurs back. Harold knew from his book that the big, long-necked dinosaur lived in the jungle. Don't that keep the heat out yonder in the jungle? It's all rumble, tough and rough and tumble. It's true. Long before the bongo was a beaten in the Congo. Slippery sliding Up on a mountain Comes flying down a mountain A pterodactyl on wing A free at last It's a prehistoric forest The forest is a blast from the past It's a jungle out there We are young, do we dare? After much searching, Harold still hadn't found a big long-necked dinosaur, or any dinosaur for that matter. Harold wondered where all the dinosaurs could possibly be hiding. <coughs> this dinosaur didn't seem as friendly as the one in Harold's book. Harold hoped a tasty snack would put the creature in a better mood. <coughs> Apparently, the dinosaur didn't like donuts.
hadn't realized that dinosaurs hatched from eggs, just like birds. And he'd never seen eggs as large as these. It was very kind of the mother dinosaur to take care of him. But Harold wanted to get on with his search for a big, long-necked dinosaur to ride. didn't seem to be any way to sneak past the mother dinosaur. Now was Harold's chance. An egg was hatching. A baby dinosaur was being born. A good laugh made them both realize there was nothing to fear. Harold noticed the sun was getting in the baby dinosaur's eyes. The baby dinosaur was delighted with Harold's gift. Harold invited the baby to join his search for a big, long-necked dinosaur. Harold was sure there'd be plenty of room on the dinosaur's back for both of them to ride. <laughs> After all the excitement, the baby wanted a drink to cool off. Harold was thirsty, too. But there was something odd about the water in the pond. Harold thought he'd better take a closer look. The pond wasn't full of water. It was full of black, sticky goo. It wasn't a pond at all. It was a tar pit. They absolutely could not drink tar. So, Harold drew a pitcher of lemonade. The lemonade was quite refreshing. Although a little on the sour side. It felt like an earthquake. Harold discovered what was making the ground shake. An erupting volcano. The lava was coming closer. If they couldn't get away, Harold feared they would end up encased in rock, just like the fossil in his bedroom drawer. So, Harold drew a giant drain 
just like the one in his bathtub at home. But there was too much lava. Even a giant drain couldn't handle it all. Long before the royal, we had soil. We travel and toil with tar and oil. It's true. Underground, the sound of bubble in a boil. Wherever you turn is a fiery furnace. Say, I go faster. That way leads to disaster. I lose my grasp. This damn may be my last. When the wild but child it get much harder, it's a blast from the past. It's a jungle out there. The sparks fill the air. In this volcanic rain, thoughts of staying insane. Jungle out there. Harold and the dinosaurs were trapped, and the lava was coming fast. Harold hoped that some water would cool off the fiery lava and slow it down. The cold water turned the lava into solid rock. Harold was pleased until the volcano erupted again. trouble yet. <gasps> the baby was so happy he actually flew. For a moment, the dinosaurs wanted to celebrate their triumph with a feast of pine cones. <laughs> Harold politely explained that he didn't eat pine cones, and he was still anxious to find a big, long necked dinosaur to ride. In all this time, he hadn't seen even one. Huh? <laughs> this was the big, long-necked dinosaur Harold had been searching for. Harold figured this probably wasn't the best time to ask for a ride. And Harold certainly was not going to let the big dinosaur hurt his friends. Baby Dinosaur was using his newfound flying skills to help. Harold's friend had given him time to think of a plan. Harold hoped marbles would do the trick. Friends thought it would be safest to leave. 
long-necked dinosaur why he'd been so mean before. The dinosaur explained that he was upset because the others had eaten his pine cones. He'd been saving them to eat during the cold winter months, but now he had none left. Harold couldn't let the big dinosaur go hungry. The Grateful Giant asked if there was anything he could do for Harold in return. It's a jungle out there Make your choices with care If you leap, you must look It says, oh, there's the book It's a jungle out there It's a jungle out there But at least we're aware In the time we could spare so much to share in that jungle out there. Harold had finally had his ride. It was even better than he dreamed. was the mother dinosaur. She was so relieved to find her baby. She'd been looking for him the whole time. Harold knew it was time to go home, but he didn't know how he would ever say goodbye to his new friends. because this goodbye was really goodbye. When he got back to his room, Harold knew the dinosaurs wouldn't be around anymore. Not anywhere. Not ever again. When Harold looked up at the sky, he was relieved to realize that at least one thing would always be there for him. The moon.
The world of the dinosaur had been even more exciting than Harold ever imagined. But it was also full of danger. There wasn't any room here for a dinosaur. They belonged in another time and place. And Harold belonged in his bed, safe and cozy. Finally, Harold dropped off to sleep and his purple crayon dropped to the floor.